Welcome back, my friends. This week, I decided to share my week with all of you. It's been hard being isolated, and to be honest, even before 2020, I was already feeling that way. Oddly, since I moved home to be with my aging mom, I didn't actually feel lonely when I lived by myself. But then I started my Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon, and all of a sudden, I wasn't so alone. So thank you for that. This week started with one of several doctor appointments planned for the next several weeks. Today, mom's driving us into Pickering to meet with one of my specialists. It was definitely a comedy of errors setting up the tripod in the front seat with me. As for the doctor's appointment, the end result was increasing my appointments from every six months to every six weeks, and I hope it'll help with one of my many chronic ailments. In this case, it's tinnitus. Does anyone else suffer from it? Ugh. Is that how you say it? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say, and keep this PG-13. Just ugh. On the way back, we hit the grocery, and then I prepared my ritual cleansing powders and sprays for my deep clean on Tuesday. It's been a year since my curtains went up, and I wanted to give them a really deep clean on the weekend, and it had been decades since my mom's bedroom curtains had been done, so I insisted on taking them down as well. I also thought it'd be the perfect time this week to do a little ritual deep clean with intention setting of the energies within our living spaces. When we clean or clear space, clothing, dust, anything from the mundane to the magical, we are leaving a void. So when I clean, I like to both clear and reset or call in new energy. I do this using sprays for linens, curtains, dusting off surfaces, and powders for deep clean on the mattresses or carpets. Just make sure if you do try this, you do it at your vacuum's own peril. It is recommended that you use a shop vac as the powders can clog the motors of a regular vac. And sure enough, I did just that with my handheld and had to switch to the central vac in order to complete the task. So fair warning. At the end of the video, I will dive deeper on the hows of the process for anyone interested. This morning I woke to a winter wonderland in April, but it was magical and a clear reminder of why I don't practice my seasonal celebrations on calendar. I've been wanting to address this concept in one of my videos, and today was the perfect weather for one of my walk and talk videos. So I grabbed the camera and I spent two and a half hours filming. It was stunning, but gold. It got to the point where I couldn't feel my fingers and had to physically look where it was on the camera to ensure I was pressing the right buttons. That's when I headed home, but then I saw Grandmother Willow, and I had to stop to say hi. We have a very special relationship. She is the central tree in my coven of trees. Perhaps that will be a video for the summer? Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in learning about my coven of trees, who they are, and why they're so important to me. But for now, it was time to head home and warm up. I've been promising my mom a fresh batch of biscotti, twice baked almond cranberry. I doubled the recipe because the first time I made it, the yield was so small. And mom went through them pretty fast, which is a good sign. But I tend to hand write out one or two different recipes that I find on YouTube and I couldn't remember which of the two I'd used. These ones fell flat, like literally spread so flat, but they were still yum. And as Chef Alvin says on MasterChef Canada, taste is king. That brings us to today. It will be a full day sitting at the computer, preparing the script, recording the voiceovers, and editing the videos for this weekend. 
That said, I do also tend to get a little distracted thinking ahead about what new adventures are planned, such as my workings with microgreens for my Urban Green Witch series. But I decided I should probably stop to eat, so I decided to make one of my favorite breakfast or brunch treats, which are pen grapes. It's essentially the crepe recipe, but I make them just a bit thicker, and I also add coconut and sometimes chocolate chips for a bounty pan crepe. Seriously, yum. This time, I just went with the coconut. But all of that said and done, most of you probably stuck around to discuss the witchy deep cleaning and my how-tos. So let me just grab a refreshing little treat. And head up to the desk so that we can deep dive the deep clean. Let's start with the powders. It's really basic. I saw a YouTuber do a deep clean on her mattress which was so simple. She dusted the mattress with baking soda, let it sit for about a half hour, and then vacuumed it up. She did warn that you need a heavy duty shop vac as the powders can damage and clog the motors of a regular vac. Now I did use my handheld Dyson pet vac and got a few strokes in before it went belly up. It didn't die, it's working again, but it definitely stopped. So I ended up switching to the central back and it did the job. So if you decide to try this one, you do it at your own risk and your vacuum's peril. <laughs> I take no responsibilities for any damage to your back. Got it? Good. But in all seriousness, as I watched her muggle cleaning with me video, it made me start to think of all of the ritual powdered botanicals that I had in the apothecary that I used to make incense and all the ritual intention magic waiting to be infused into one of my most sacred spaces of all, where I sleep and often journey in dream time. I already had ritually made powders from several of my organic botanicals. I personally do use a coffee grinder that is specifically in the apothecary for herbs only because you want to have a fine powder when making incense and also when doing something like this. It was just a matter of determining what energy I wanted to work with. Protection would be ideal for anyone suffering from night terrors or other such issues. Love and or lusty botanicals would be wonderful for, well, yeah, no. But I went for a blend to aid in my lucid dreaming, journeying and dreamwalking, hence the mugwort, with eucalyptus and lemongrass added for clarity of mind and vision. Now for the sprays. I have been crafting and selling my ritual sprays for a while now and they remain one of my favorite ways to work with plant spirit energy and intention setting. Since they've become my alternative for incense and smoking, I have over nine blends that I personally work with, but will share three options with you today. Since this is for cleaning, I will leave you to use whatever natural homemade cleaning spray that you would normally use. If you don't, there are many recipes available online. I recommend checking out Fairyland Cottage as she's quite a few and I actually love her channel. Once you have your base, it's time to add some magic to the mundane. I do this and I'm sure it will come as no surprise with my plant spirit botanicals. Today I am making a spray for protection, working with my grandmother blackthorn spines and berries as the base. The number of berries I use are actually intentional. They guard the four corners, above, below, within, without, known and unknown. The spray is usually the foundation on windows, beds, mirrors and more, then another spray is layered on it. You can use any botanicals that you would for a cleansing and protection smoke of sacred space. Depending on the surface it will be used on, you can add pure organic essential oils, but for these I simply use the botanicals themselves, almost creating a cleansing floral essence, I guess? Now one more thing to note, depending on the cleaning base that you created, 
you may notice the colors of the botanicals being transferred to the liquid. This may mean it can stain the surface that you use it on, so keep that in mind and test surfaces when necessary. I personally don't care if my mattress gets stained, it's going to be covered up, but honestly, I've not had any problems. The second mist I crafted was for manifestation and what I refer to as holistic abundance. This would be used when dusting and cleaning surfaces where I do my work and crafting, like the apothecary table, my desk, computer screen, and phone. This is also another reason why I don't add essential oils, as they will be counterproductive in cleaning screens, glasses, and mirrored surfaces. The final mist I crafted worked with herbs that you may have recognized from my self-acceptance videos, because that's the energy that it brings. When working with the sprays, it's not simply about adding the botanicals, it's about mindfully and energetically cleaning with them. In other words, you're not listening to books on tape or music or any of those things. You are focusing as if the cleaning itself is a ritual because it is. For example, when using the self-acceptance or self-love mist on my mirrors, I am mindful to clean away the negative thoughts that I have of myself when I look in the mirror an ongoing battle, but I'm trying, and I bring in the energy of self-acceptance and love. If I had to sum up some tips on a witchy deep clean, I would say 1. Remembering that you are not just removing surface dirt, but energetic as well, and 2. Remembering when you clear negative energy, you create a void. So be mindful and intentional about calling in the energy you want within your different spaces in your home. Now it's time for me to take a deep dive on the footage filmed on Wednesday as I prepare another witch basic and concepts video on what my witch's wheel looks like or how I witch off calendar. Hopefully it will be up on Sunday following this video, but before I go, I wanted to mention that I started this channel with the intention of it being a simple lifestyle channel that happened to be lived by an animist, a witch by many names. I think it's important to show that we are whole beings living lives, not just sharing witchy how-tos, but sharing who we are as holistic beings, the mundane and the magic in the mundane. It seems to be missing in our community, and I truly hope we get to see more witchy lifestyle vloggers, because honestly, these are my favorite types of videos to watch personally, and most of the ones I watch are not by witches. Perhaps one of you may have been considering it. I hope so, and I hope you will get started soon. I am really excited to get your feedback on this video, and if you enjoyed spending the week with me, I know it means the world to me to have you all along. It makes the solitary witch's life a little less lonely to know that you are here. I hope I bring some companionship to your day as well. Many blessings and a heartfelt namaste.